Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips on learning how to make large scale environments in Blender. Now when pointing you to resources for learning how to do stuff like this, it's actually a little bit trickier than other subjects relating to Blender like rigging or how to make procedural shaders, because most 3D software in general has not really been designed to handle large scale scenes. And by large scale scenes, I mean really large scale scenes, like dozens, hundreds or thousands of kilometers in size. Now this is largely due to mathematical or computational limitations like floating point precision and even camera clipping distances. So there's going to be a lot of caveats in this video. But of course, where there's technical difficulty, there's also paid solutions to try and get around it. So I'm going to try and show you a balance of free and paid resources in this video, but there's going to be a bit of a bias towards paid ones. Now in Blender, the two most common ways I've seen people make large scale terrains is by using either regular displacement or micro polygon displacement, otherwise known as adaptive subdivision. Now the adaptive subdivision only works in cycles, it doesn't work with EV, but regular displacement works in both engines. Right here I've got a video made by the Wayward Art Company that a lot of people have seen, Procedural Landscapes in Blender 2.8, this will still be relevant to 2.9 versions, but they put together a fairly simplistic but still pretty cool looking scene using the shader editor nodes, passing data to the regular displacement output, making use of some extra compositions like having the cloud images in the background, and also combining in some texture data inside to create a pretty nice result. I think it's a good starting point for people that have never ever tried to make terrains before because it can ramp up in complexity quite quickly. I mean, you can see with the nodes here, it's a bit more than you'd expect from the start of the video, just by adding a simple plane. But I think it's a good introduction, it's a good deep dive, so I recommend checking it out. To the tune of more advanced micro polygon displacement and the use of particle systems, Gleb Alexandrov has, over the last few years, made a collection of really good and really useful videos that are just packed with information about this. For example, we have the Micro Polygon Displacement Basics Part 1 and 2. These were accompaniments to their Space VFX course, which is available on Blender Market and other stores, but they're freely available to watch here on YouTube, so you can get all the information you need. If we take a quick look at Part 1, you can see how he's basically demonstrating how to make this micro planet of sorts. And he also runs through a terrain demonstration, showing how you can combine bump and displacement to get really cool results. See, this is a lovely looking result here. But it's not just terrains that he's helped out with, because I've seen a lot of people recommend this how to make a grass field video, which is six years ago. As you can see, it goes through the process of setting up a plane, setting up the different blades of grass and different types of clumps, and then essentially using particle systems with the hair mode to try and apply them to the plane, and then add some extra variety and discoloration. As you can see here in the related videos, there are other people that have done pretty similar tutorials. CG Geek's done Create Realistic Grass in Blender 2.8 in 15 minutes. And they've also done a realistic forest in 30 minutes. So there's quite a lot of variety there if you want to look around the different types of YouTube video content. Again, this is all freely available. I want to give a quick shout out to Render Rides, aka Agniv, who's done this really nice scene. This was in September 2019, how to make an atmospheric scene in under 10 minutes. They have this lovely deer here, it's very moody, I love the volumetrics, but again, this is a small scale terrain. And when looking at a lot of environment art done in Blender, we tend to see this quite a lot. A lot of obfuscation of the distance, but this is a really cool video, so I recommend you go and check it out. But moving on, I want to give you a recommendation for quite a popular paid add-on, which is called True Terrain 3.0. This is an all-in-one package for building all kinds of nice looking terrains in Blender, and it even comes with a really nice water shader for doing oceans. So you can have a quick flick through the images here, the results look quite nice. If we take a scroll down the page, we can see they've got some nice demonstration videos and images, and there's just tons of information on this page. As you can see, all PBR assets with shader sliders for the particle systems, the age, freshness, wetness, age patches, all kinds of materials. This here is a really nice demonstration of their water shader as well. See how the objects can be seen underneath the surface. So this is definitely being marketed for people that want an all-in-one solution, just quickly being able to put terrains together, which they can adapt towards their own artwork. There's a pro version and light version, pro is $39, light is $25. Now if you want some in-depth demonstrations of how this add-on works, then Ask NK has done a nice video about it. That was June 2020, so this is fairly recent. Basically demonstrating how to use the add-on, how to make a nice terrain from it, how to apply the textures, more variety, applying the water, and yeah, just a really nice demonstration. Now if you don't need a full terrain generation toolkit because you feel like you're capable of doing that aspect yourself, then I can still recommend other add-ons such as Scatter 4.0, which is absolutely fantastic for distributing different types of flora. Now this is one that I have spent some time experimenting with, although I really haven't used it as much as I should because it's actually really enjoyable to use, it's really easy to use as well. Essentially just by clicking a few buttons you will scatter a lovely biome of flora around your scene, and the results do look amazing, they are quite spectacular. I do have an affiliate link for this add-on, so if you're interested I will leave that down below as well, but it's definitely worth taking a look through their product page because they've spent a long time organising all of this. I mean look all these demonstrations are completely animated, it's very well presented, and the quality of this store page does represent the quality of the final product. 
so I can give that my recommendation. And they are very dedicated to supporting it in the future. They keep making new content. As you can see here, Scatter 4.0, there are 64 new biomes. And if you need some convincing about it, then they also have a user artwork gallery, which you can go and have a look at. So there's a lot of architectural visualization here and just other types of really nice artwork from people in the Blender community. Moving on, there is an alternative to this called Grasswald. I don't know whether or not to say that Grasswald and Scatter are in competition. I think Scatter focuses more on, well, quite appropriately, the scattering element of it. Grasswall just has a very nice, extremely high quality collection of floral elements. So you can see this here in the different demonstration images. The results are very pretty. So if you feel like you have terrain creation under your own control and you feel like you need some flora elements for your scene, there are several approaches you can take. As we've seen, there's some free content available like Gleb's grass video. You can apply these techniques and add your own content. So adapt it for your own art style. Alternatively, if you're looking for something more realistic, then instead of spending so much time remaking realistic assets by yourself, it's probably worth the price to jump in and buy one of these packs slash add-ons to speed up your workflow because these kind of realistic assets are things that can be reused on all sorts of projects. Okay, so let's take a step back now and talk about terrain generation. Surely there must be a way to create terrains in Blender that's free, that produces semi-realistic results, and doesn't require the use of an add-on or external piece of software. And yes, there is. Because Blender comes pre-packaged with the Ant Landscape add-on, you can enable this in the Preferences under the Add-on tab. As you can see, this add-on creates landscapes and planets using various noise types, and stands for another noise tool. So it's located in the 3D viewport, add mesh, and you have all sorts of options here, as we can see. Subdivisions, noise types, controls for seed, depth, dimension, etc. You can use this to generate terrains. There's even considerations for slopes and erosion. So just be aware that this is here. And of course, there is tutorial content available for this on YouTube. Let's just take a look here. We've got the CG Essentials, creating landscapes in Blender with the free and landscapes add-on. And even down here, Remington Creative, Easy Realistic Terrain Part 1. So there is content available for this. If you don't want to shell out for hyper-realistic terrain generation, you want to use something that's already in Blender, then go for it. But if you are looking for something that's paid, that can produce really excellent results, which is trusted across various industries, then I can recommend a piece of software called World Creator. I've heard lots of good things about this. Terrain and landscape generation light years ahead. Generate, design, blend, mix, paint and sculpt, erode and simulate in real time. So there's all sorts of things this can do. The data can be exported and used in pretty much any software you like. As you can see, it's used by all sorts of game companies, 2K, Bioware, Blizzard, Avalanche Studios, Ubisoft. Powerful design capabilities, there's an emphasis on proceduralism. You can color things easily, import custom textures, even 3D models, it comes with a renderer as well. But like I said, if you like, you can export things to your own software. So as you can see, they're very aware that the kind of terrain data that's generated here will be used in all kinds of other softwares and engines. But the main question is, how much does it cost? Now, of course, with paid software like this, whenever you click on the buy button, it never tells you how much it costs immediately. This is one of my pet peeves about paid software like this. They make you have to find the price. So you can scroll down. Okay, there's an upgrade. We hear about discounts, but there's still no price. Compare the features, still no price, really. Look at all the things you can get, scrolling down. Wow, look at all those features. Is, is it here? Nope, still not here. Even more features, blah, blah, blah. Finally, $149 for the standard price. And as you can see in red, companies with an annual revenue of under 100,000 US dollars. Now, of course, this is not going to be for everyone. The only reason you'd look into this is if you were seriously considering some high quality terrain generation software to assist with your workflow. Now, with that in mind, Martin Kleckner, who's a really lovely guy, had done this video back in 2019, how to quickly add large scale landscape into Blender using World Creator. So if you're interested in combining these softwares, then he gives you a nice demonstration of how it works. As you can see, the interface for World Creator is very sleek, very smooth. You can adjust parameters in real time and it is literally real time. It's very satisfying to play with. And then of course, afterwards, this data can be imported into Blender where you can modify it however you like. Okay, so with that in mind, we know there's free and paid tools available for generating terrains inside of Blender. We have the Ant tool, which comes prepackaged with Blender, and then there's some external ones. There's more than what I've mentioned, but it's only a Google way. There's things like Gaia, it's I think another one. But speaking about Martin Kleckner, if you don't know, this guy has previously worked on cinematics for the Kingdom Come Deliverance game. And he's also currently working on a short film called Heroes of Bronze. Recently, he's been doing a lot of experimentation with using Blender, especially Core Blender, for creating all kinds of large scale, really beautiful environments. So he's teamed up with friends of the channel, CG Boost, to make this lovely new course, Master 3D Environments in Blender. And yes, this is a paid course and it's currently in early access. So we've seen that there's already some content available on YouTube for making terrains in large scale environments. But this is what I would consider a higher quality paid alternative. 
Now the results of this course are absolutely spectacular and you don't have to take my word for that, just go and have a look at the trailer. Like the results are genuinely amazing as you can see here. And the key point about this course is all of this is made with Core Blender. So let's just have a quick look through the web page. In this course, you will learn every important workflow for landscape creation in Blender without the use of any paid add-ons or assets. So if you're interested in learning how to use Blender by itself to make this kind of content, then this is absolutely the course for you. I don't think there's any YouTube videos that provide not only the quality of these terrains, but also the sheer variety of these results. So let's take a look through what the course entails. Chapter 1 and 2 are theory and preparation, basically talking about the tools that will be used, how landscapes are constructed, erosion, different types of atmospheric effects and things like that. Chapter 3 is basic workflows, talking about the different methods that are generally applied. Chapter 4 is using the ant tool to create a lone mountain, and you can click on the video on this page and have a look at previews for the chapter. Chapter 5 is a node workflow for a desert environment, and there's other node workflows as well, so it takes a look at mountains, arctic, this is one of the courses that will be available later because as I said this course is in early access. There's the highlands which will be coming soon. Then he also takes a look at using the GIS add-on, which is for importing satellite imagery and elevation data to create this Scottish lake. Chapter 10, available later, is showing how to make a treescape. Then for chapter 11, different types of water bodies, and the results of this are again really nice to look at. This is a proper ocean shader here. Then chapter 12 is about cloud types, so it shows you how to use node generated clouds and also utilize VDB volumes. Chapter 13 is atmospheric effects. This is one I think I'm definitely going to love because I love me some atmospherics. Chapter 14 is about custom trees and vegetation. So if we click on this here, you'll be able to see that there's some optimization tricks going on. I can spot a little billboarded tree there. So he's going to go into a lot of detail with this. Chapter 15, not available yet, is the weather effects. As you can see here, there's some snow, and I love snow, so I'll enjoy looking through this. You can see there's a particle system emitting from the plane. So it shows you how to set up all of these effects. And then completely optionally, if you wanted, coming soon there'll be another chapter where he tells you about various other add-ons which are available, including paid ones which you can use if you want to enhance your workflow, but they're not required for any of the major content in the course. On the page as well, you can have a look at the entire curriculum, so you can go through and there'll be previews which you can watch from the different chapters. So it's all laid out in a very nice, very professional way. At the time of making this video, you can see that there's a 25% early access discount if you use a coupon early mountain at the checkout page but this may not be available when you're watching the video. So as you can see, there's a lot of high quality content here. It's I think definitely worth the $79 price tag, but again, I know not everyone can afford that. But as we said, there's lots of other available content online where people can learn how to make their own terrains for free on YouTube. So just have a quick browse. There's lots of different YouTube channels that have done this. CG Geeks videos seem to be quite popular as well. But as I said, with all of these different aspects of terrain creation, there are quite a few limitations which are really based around the design of the software in the first place. When making terrains, you always have to consider whether it's appropriate to fake distance. For example, if you're rendering a lovely scene like this on the World Creator website, it may not be applicable to create physical terrains at a massive distance. Maybe render different sections of the terrain independently and then add them together afterwards. Same with the volumetrics, actually. You probably don't need to render all the volumetrics, like all the clouds, in your main scene. And with some extra composition skills, you could probably get some really nice results by breaking everything down. But hopefully this video has given you a nice list of resources which you can go and have a look at and maybe experiment with so you can start designing your own terrains in Blender. But again, I recommend the course by Martin Kleckner. And if you're interested in picking it up, then I will leave my affiliate link in the description. So thanks for watching everyone and an extra thanks for the patrons. Stay safe and I will see you next time.